the DVD is coming out today. Um, in putting together the DVD extras, I worked with uh, Scott Powell, who is an editor for 24, was up for two Emmys last year, and we looked at the responses from audiences across the country in figuring out what we were going to do with the DVD extras. We had about another 300 hours of footage to choose from, and so we tried to answer questions that came up uh, in the course of of all these audience screenings, like what happened to Isaac, what happened to Joe, um, how the film impacted me, and then also gave a little bit of more exposure to some of the great things that are happening in Iraq, with the Iraqi Security Council briefing, uh, and also um, crowd favorites like Staff Sergeant Edward Allier. We had some extra footage and did some great scenes with him. So we're very excited um, that now the DVD can be bought anywhere, it can be sent to any friend, it uh, can be watched at any time. Uh, so thanks a lot for coming out today. We're going to show a couple clips, answer all your questions, and have some fun. What do you think is the best way to support troops? Because I personally don't live anywhere near a military base or a USO. There really isn't a lot of support for the military here. And, and what I found is most organizations to support the troops are local for like that base or it's a USO and they're usually near the bases. Well, um, you know, that, that's a great question. Um, and the way I would answer it is this. There's a number of wonderful organizations that support the troops. I think the best thing, and, and we've done a lot to raise a lot of money for a lot of them, I think a great thing to do is to figure out, you know, what strikes your chord the most. Um, you know, Wounded Warriors Project, they help wounded guys when they come back and, and, and are there to augment services and help them out. Um, you know, Operation Homefront, uh, they try and help the families on the home front. USA Cares tries to help the families when the guys are deployed overseas, you know, if they've had to move for deployment or something like that. Um, you know, Operation um, Gratitude has sent, you know, half a million boxes overseas to soldiers deployed. So you have to see if, it, you know, getting care packages overseas when they're, when they're over there, that means a lot to them. That, that shows them that someone in America cares. So finding an organization near you or one that really speaks to you, uh, we have some listed at brothersatwarmovie.com, uh, is a great way to find out you know, how to send a care package overseas. Um, if helping wounded guys is something that's, there's a, a number of wonderful organizations that help that. The USO provides entertainment for troops overseas. So I think it, it, you know, what's, what's a great thing to do is to find a cause that speaks to you personally and, and to help out. Um, for me personally, I like to do these screenings that kind of raise awareness of these groups. I like to help them raise a little bit of money, but I also like to do things to kind of, you know, let more people know um, that they're out there. Um, there's a number of great ways to engage and support um, members of all our services and the military families supporting them. And, um, you know, find one that really, that really works for you and, and get behind it. That's a great thing. I, I think it's important for uh, soldiers, vets, and military families to see the film because of the reactions I've seen um, from each of those. Uh, groups after they've seen the film. Um, you know, I've had Vietnam veterans um, stand up and say, I wish you would have been in Vietnam when I was there, to tell our story. Uh, had a Medal of Honor recipient say, Jake, this isn't just a film about your experience. It's a, a film about my experience in Vietnam, the experience of my family, and all of our families. Um, you know, this has just been a film that has really opened up those communication channels between between husbands and wives. Um, we had, uh, I think Beth Wilson once said that, uh, you know, this was the closest I could get to going overseas with my husband, you know, to walk a mile in his shoes. So the thing that has been really exciting for us is it's been kind of a, a catharsis for the people who have served to see the film, both veterans and active duty. But even more importantly than that maybe is it's been this, it's opened, the, it's opened uh, communi communication, it's, it's created a bridge between the war fighter and the family member at home. And, uh, and that's been very exciting to see. So I think that's the real reason why it's a great film for them to see together because it does open those uh, lines of dialogue and it's a great frame of reference for the war fighter to start to tell his own story. This is the night, this is the eve of Isaac's departure for his fourth deployment to Iraq. Uh, he's reunited with his daughter, who didn't recognize him when he came home from Iraq the third time. It's, it, it, is, it is truly, a, um, on one hand, most exciting uh, a deployment of his life. He's going to be a company commander in Iraq of 150 elite soldiers. Personally, it's the most devastating moment of his life because he's going to rip himself away from his wife and his five-year-old daughter who he's just reconnected with. She struggled digesting it. Sometimes she is verbal, which is great. 
when she'll come forward and ask questions, you know, like, are you going to be home for Halloween? No. Christmas? No. I'll be home when you're four. And uh, that gives her a little bit of context on it. Uh, we talked about the desert uh, yesterday, I think. But there's still a lot of emotions inside her that she doesn't know how to handle. When you have an opportunity, when the, the, the viewers have a chance to see that entire clip at home, uh, he progresses and he, you really start to feel the pain of what he's going through. And as his brother, I was sitting there interviewing him the night before, and it really struck me. I mean, it was hard for me to watch him, actually. It was so personal and so powerful. And you hear me say it off camera, because it just came to me. I couldn't, I couldn't stop anymore. And I said, why do you do it? And he just stops, and he says, you know, I've, I've asked myself that question. I know all the routine answers. The only thing I can come up with is, what if I didn't? And it made me think. Because I said, what if he didn't? What if Isaac didn't go four times? What if all those men and women who make the choice to go off a second time, a third time, a fourth time, to go fight the war on terror, what if they just decided, you know what? I've had enough. And I have a tremendous respect for the people that make that decision and put their lives on hold and go overseas to serve their country. Hi, Jay. How are you doing? Doing well, thanks. Great. So uh, you have a right. question for Jake? Yeah, Jake, uh, first of all, I saw your film at a Gary Sinise event, and, and I was impressed. I thought it was excellent. Uh, that was a um, screening you had over at Fox. And I was wondering if you've since seen The Hurt Locker. It's getting a lot of acclaim now. And I'd just be curious, if you have seen it, whether you think it was a pretty good reflection of the kinds of people you met there and uh, a positive uh, description of the soldiers. I think that's a great question. Um, I did see Hurt Locker. I actually saw it uh, opening night in Los Angeles. Um, and honestly, it's one of the first films to come out about the war in Iraq where I didn't feel the need to run out of the theater as I was watching it. You know, it, it was so nice to see a filmmaker not throw their politics at me in the first five minutes of the film. And um, I think it's a film that, that people are really going to enjoy. You know, it's a, it's a fictional film, so, but it's a fictional film that really tries to veer towards what a documentary can do. And I think Jeremy Renner is um, pretty amazing in his portrayal of this bomb specialist. Now, not all bomb specialists are like that. You know, some are a little bit more methodical. He plays kind of a, kind of a wild, a uh, little bit of a wild character. But it's realistic, and he's there, and it, it really kind of puts you into the essence of the emotion of what some of these situations are like. I, I thought what the film you made was excellent. It was personal. I felt attached to you and your family and the guys being there. And uh, I think it's interesting that I think the public will react well to your film because you can see that these negative movies don't do well at the box office. And... Most Americans are really looking for the positive aspect. I hope you get the publicity uh, you deserve. I, I, think it, I think people will feel very good about it. Thank you. I mean, you're right about that. And I mean, that's, thank you, Jay. And I mean, I mean that's, you bring up a lot of good points there, Jay. And um, we have been very fortunate to get a, a lot of publicity. Uh, Gary Sinise has gone on national television a bunch. I've gone on a few times. Um, you know, that's, that's why we thought it was so important to reach out to the military blogging community today. Because, as you know, um, you know, there's been this real growth of alternative media, um, people that could get the real uh, truth out to the American public. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that um, we acknowledge that and take care of that group because they are um, so important to this community uh, in getting the truth out to the American people. And, you know, I hope that... Uh, Hurt Locker and Brothers at War do well so that more films that just tell the truth about what's really happening and also what the families are really going through get out to the American public. And I've always said my goal is to let you make the decision as a viewer and not try and, you know, shove a political perspective down your throat. Let you see the truth, make up your own mind, and enjoy the journey along the way.